Hey everybody, this is LeBron James, and this pre-calculus lesson is uh, part two on symmetry and coordinate graphs. Okay, let's first take care of the board problem right here, uh, and depending on which textbook you have, I pulled this out of my textbook, so on page 133, this is numbers three and four, so consider the graph at the right, that circle right there, determine four lines of symmetry. Okay, well first of all, there are infinitely many lines of symmetry. I can fold this in half and have half the circle go over on the other half right there. But here's one right here, you guys. This uh, x-axis, which is y equals 0. This uh, y-axis, which is x equals 0. The other one that we're familiar with, the one that goes right up the middle, is y equals x. And this one going over here is y equals negative x right there. All right, so uh, sample answers are y equals 0, x equals 0, y equals negative x, y equals positive x. How many other lines of symmetry? There's infinitely many other uh, lines of symmetry. And then what other types of symmetry does this graph have? Point symmetry, you guys. This one took me a second. Uh, point symmetry about the origin. Point symmetry is this. Say I pick this point right here, and then if I went straight across through the origin right there, it would give me this point right here. The origin is the midpoint. And as long as the uh, this is the midpoint, and it's called point symmetry. So it's the midpoint of any diameter that I draw through there. So it's also point symmetry. Write an explanation of how to test for symmetry with respect to the line y equals negative x. Okay, uh, you substitute in um, uh, negative y negative x, and it, it pops out to be the same equation. And so when it does, then it's uh, uh, then it's symmetric with the respect to the line y equals negative x. That's any equation, not just this equation right here. Any equation. So if it comes out to be the same equation on both sides, then it's uh, symmetric to the line y equals negative x. Okay. So here we go. Let's begin. Determine whether the graph of the absolute value of y equals 2 minus uh, the absolute value of 2x is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, y-axis, both or neither. Use that information uh, about the symmetry to graph. Okay, remember x-axis symmetry, I substitute in x negative y. So I'm going to plug in negative y right here, and the absolute value of negative y is the same as the absolute value of positive y. So yes, it is symmetric with respect to the x-axis. You find out that it's also symmetric with respect to the y-axis. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph those guys right here. So um, let's first do this, though. When it's in quadrant one, you guys, you can disregard this absolute value stuff because everything's positive. When it's in quadrant one, you get y equals 2 minus 2x. Uh, or and put it in y equals mx plus b form, y equals negative 2x plus 2. And I'm going to graph that over here. y equals negative 2x plus 2 plus 2 is right there. And then use your slope down 2 to the right 1. There it is in quadrant one. Now I'm going to use my symmetry. I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis right there. Now I use my symmetry again and reflect that over the y-axis, and there it is, graph right there. That's pretty cool stuff, you guys. Okay, you'll do the same thing on this one here. This is example four in my book on page 132. A crystal, a crystal grapher, I think that's how you say that, can model a cross-section of a crystal with mathematical equations. After sketching uh, the outline of, on a graph, she notes that the crystal has both x-axis and y-axis symmetry. She uses the piecewise function, y equals 2, when x is between 0 and 1. So here's the y equals 2. It's this horizontal line right here, y equals 2. y equals 2 is a horizontal line right here. Okay, so between 0 and 1 right here. And then y equals uh, 3 minus x. I'm going to think of it as y equals negative x plus 3. There's my plus 3. Negative x means down 1 to the right 1. So here's y equals negative x plus 3 going down right here. But I only want the part that goes between 1 and 3. So I only want this little piece right there. Okay, so there it is right there. There it is, uh, my piecewise function in quadrant 1. Now it's reflected over the x-axis. So there it is. Reflected over the y-axis right there. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and write the equations. There it is in quadrant 1 right here. Over here in quadrant 2, this is y equals 2 still when x is between negative 1 to 0. And then... This slope right here, this line right here is a positive slope right here, and it goes up here at plus 3. So it looks like y equals x plus 3, and I think your book writes it as 3 plus x. Okay, but that's when x goes between negative 3 and negative 1. I get y equals uh, 3 plus x. I think your book puts it right there. Okay, yeah, they do. All right, okay, this one, the book made a mistake. I'll show you in just a second right here. Okay, here's, and I had to, I had to go back and change this video because I didn't catch it till the middle of the video. Here's y equals negative 2 right here uh, when x goes uh, from negative 1 to 0. And this one right here, this is a negative slope, okay? 
So it's going down here at negative 3. So it looks like y equals uh, negative x minus 3 when x is between negative 3 and 1. All right, so your book, there's your book answer. See, they forgot the negative in front of the x right there. So, oops, I didn't put it. I thought I put it in there. Yeah, it's negative x minus 3 right there. Don't forget your negative right there. All right, uh, they forgot to put the negative x minus 3, and then there's the equations for quadrant 4 right there. All right, so even and odd functions, you guys. Okay, functions whose graphs are symmetric uh, to the y-axis are uh, called even functions. Functions whose graph are symmetric with respect to the origin are called odd functions. Okay, so even functions if they're y-axis symmetry, odd functions if they're uh, origin symmetry. All right. Uh, some functions are neither even nor odd. So this is from example one of the lesson that we did uh, uh, yesterday in, in my class right here. So f of x equals x to the fifth is an odd function because uh, it was symmetric with respect um, uh, to the origin. Uh, but this was neither on that one. So when you plugged them in, uh, it gave me... And can you see right here, um, uh, this graph is... is, uh, is, is is odd because if I, let's see if I can do that. I'll show you on another graph right there. I'm going to flip it around. Origin is this, you guys. I can do it with this one. Can you see this right here? Watch this graph. I'm going to turn it upside down and it's going to be the same graph. Okay? So if it does that, then it's origin symmetry, which means it's an odd function right there. Okay? Um, and then this one, if I did that to this one right here, um, uh, it wouldn't work over there. Whoops, let me, <laughs> sorry, let me undo that. Let me undo that. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay, so uh, here's a uh, here is some um, functions that are even functions when they're y-axis symmetry. Can you see this side folds over on this side? This side folds over on this side. These guys, if I flipped them upside down, um, uh, these guys would be respected to the origin. They would be symmetric with respect to the origin, so they're odd functions. So origins are odd. Um, y-axis symmetry or even functions right there. And I think I have those graphs. Yeah, watch. If I just turn them upside down, they look like the same graph. Okay, if I turn that upside down, it's the same graph. If I turn this guy upside down, same graph. So origin symmetry, which means, um, which means uh, that they're odd functions right there. Alrighty, that's it.